Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to uh, our Sunday service. Welcome to Grace UMC. Uh, those who are joining from uh, via Zoom, welcome. Uh, and you need to be quiet. <laughs> because service is just getting started. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome. Uh, we have 10 members uh, joining us via Zoom. Uh, welcome. Uh, people from like different places. So uh, it's good to have you uh, today. And uh, today, and so I have two more Sundays here at Grace UMC, and my heart is still uh, figuring out how to, how to process this. But, you know, I cherish every moment I have here in this church and the moment with you and so I'm thankful for you to be here especially we have uh, Lloyd the Beth uh, with his father Robert Cooley uh, Hello. <laughs> he has grown a lot since I baptized him <laughs> this last uh, last last February right yeah right before everything right yes yes he was, right. sick. he was sick that day after church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has grown a lot. It's, the time really flies. But so we'll, we'll cherish every moment uh, we have uh, in our hand. And today we are going to celebrate uh, the life of Irene Lee and we'll share our memory and thoughts or story uh, with Irene. If you have any stories to share, you're welcome to do so. So without further ado, I'll invite to uh, worship with us and and. Huh, okay, not sing, okay, sorry. Those were more Sunday, I guess. And we'll, we'll, we'll be able to sing. All right, and let us worship. Well, good morning, everyone. And if you will uh, join me in stand for humming our opening hymn, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Uh,
answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protects you. May he send your help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your blood sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord, our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Church in Alamo, he will uh, preside the meeting for us. Uh, so I'll be ordained uh, not on last Sunday of June 27th, uh, June 27th. So there will be no service here, but there will be online service available. If there is no online service available, I'll, uh, I'll, my wife will Zoom <laughs> the entire service so that uh, you can watch that by ordination service, which is, will be uh, meaningful uh, for you because you've been through you know, all those three years in my uh, journey to the ordination. So I hope you uh, join me on June 27th. So uh, next Sunday will be the last Sunday for me to worship here. And Eon Carson's uh, Eagle Project uh, it's still going on, and some of you have donated uh, your money to uh, his project, but we still need your help and, and support. So if you are able, please uh, make a donation uh, for, to his cause to beautify our uh, uh, grass area uh, on our right from here. So I think I, we have a separ uh, separate basket to be uh, designated, yeah, designated for that for the donation. So if you are able, please make a donation so that uh, he can get to work. <laughs> and I have sent you the GoFundMe link. And if you are feel if you, if you prefer to donate via uh, online, please do so. Follow the link and make a donation. And 
with the nation and hopefully much appreciated. Uh, I have a good news to share. Uh, next Sunday, we will baptize a little one. <laughs> uh, Nahia, uh, Luhai, and Salanshi, uh, the Indian family who visited us uh, last Sunday. Yet, we are going to baptize a little one, Nahia, uh, next Sunday. So, the next Sunday will be my last Sunday here at Grace UMC. And at the same time, the baptism. <laughs> of a precious little baby. So uh, please come and enjoy this moment together. And there will be Healthy Church Initiative workshop uh, today at 4, th 4, uh, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Uh, it's about plotting your reopening sequence with Jim Griffith. Even though we are reopened and we are worshiping in person, there will be some important and helpful information uh, for us. So if you are able, uh, please follow the link that I uh, forwarded to you, uh, I think yesterday or uh, the day before yesterday, and join the workshop. All right, I think that's about it, and yes. I just want to remind everyone that our going away service will be next, this coming Saturday at one o'clock here at the church. And, <clears throat> and you uh, are, can bring anything that you want that we will sh we'll share, and your own silverware and your um, uh, plates and everything. And we will have water for you, and we have bottled water that will be available for you. So if you'll come and join us, we'd like to say thank you to Pastor Peter and good luck for his future endeavors. So hope to see you. And it would be nice if you would RSVP to me so I know how many tables that we can set up. Thank you. Thank you. I, I guess we will uh, we'll see each other. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, this coming Saturday and, and Sunday. All right. Do you have any announcements you want to make? All right. Today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. And the first part is the parable of the growing seed. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full corn kernel in, his, in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. And the other parable is of the mustard seed. Again he said, what shall we say to the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planting it, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such large branches that the birds of the air can perch on its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Thanks be to God. And our hymn of preparation that we can come along with is Faith While Trees Are Still in Blossom. <laughs>
Every week at this time, it is our privilege to share our hearts with one another and with God. I invite you to share your joys and concerns, your thanksgivings and hope. Judy, who is healing and she's um, in a rehab, so mm -hmm. prayers for her. Mm -hmm. And um, prayers for my son in law's father, who has come home from the hospital with care from hospice. Mm -hmm. We expected to, for him to pass soon, so prayers for the family mm -hmm. and also for John. For Judy and for uh, Donna's son and law's daughter, loving and gracious God, yeah. Yeah, prayers. Prayers. I like prayers for my daughter-in-law's family. Her father did pass away this last week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For my uh, daughter-in-law's family, loving and gracious God, yeah, yeah. prayers. Yes. Joy for spending time with friends and family, even though I was in Reno for a celebration of life. It was good to see family and friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. For uh, Karen's family, loving and gracious God. Prayers for Joy and Jerry Morrissey. Uh, they've been sick. Uh, Jerry is okay, but uh, Joy is just sick. So uh, please keep her and her family in your prayers. Loving and gracious God. Yes. And I have a joy <laughs> once again. We have uh, Dean Walden and Linda joining us. Uh, they came. Uh, enjoying our service last Sunday and good to see you again and happy, I'm so happy to have you in our worship today and we have Roy, <laughs> a little one, and, and Larvard. It's been so long, <laughs> you know, seeing each other in person and it's so grateful to have you all in our, in our service and I'm happy to have you as well uh, in our service. So loving and curious God, there are our prayers. And uh, Honey, are you there? We have a birthday boy. There's a playground. Okay, okay. You miss your happy birthday someday. <laughs> My son just celebrated his, his fourth birthday uh, yesterday. The time flies. When we first came here at Grace, he was one. <laughs> he was one. And June 12 is his birthday. And 2018, June 6th. Paul, that's the day that I first met our Grace family. I met SPRC members <laughs> on, on his birthday. So uh, it's been a private journey and, and um, I'm a happy uh, traveler because I have companions like you guys. So good to uh, uh, have you in my, in my life and our family's journey. So love it for, little, for this little one. <laughs> Loving and gracious God. Yeah. Alright, so let's continue in prayer. After a moment of silence, I'll offer a prayer for us. Let's pray. God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive these petitions of your people, that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. So, living life giving God, heal our lives, that we may acknowledge your wonderful deeds and offer you thanks from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to uh, share your memory uh, of a story with Irene Lee, our dear member who uh, worshiped with us and who stayed with us for quite a while. I know she's been here at Grace uh, more than uh, like four years, five years, something like that. Uh, she, she was here before I came. So I invite you to share uh, whatever you can think of uh, of my me. And if you want to share, please raise your hand. I've learned that it's hard to really get to know people that you only see during Sunday morning worship. <laughs> I enjoyed greeting Irene Lee and passing the peace of Christ. She was so sweet. When I admired her beautiful suits, she quietly admitted that she made all her own clothes. Judy Kuftin would sit outside with Irene so she wouldn't be alone while waiting for her ride home. Soon Judy was giving rides to Irene every Sunday. During the trips between Irene's apartment at Brookdale and our church, 
they had a little time to share stories. Irene told of the Japanese invading her home in Seoul, Korea, targeting government officials, including Irene's father. The family escaped to China and made their way through that country, experiencing hardships along their journey. Irene had two sons, one who now lives in Castro Valley and one in Black Hawk. Irene attended the California Arts and Crafts College and produced many paintings in both watercolors and oils. During the COVID pandemic, Irene experienced lockdown at her Brookdale facility and really missed socializing and eating with her friends there. Judy uses three words to describe Irene, humble, caring, and kind. That's Irene. Thank you. Thank you. I um I knew Irene to be a quiet soul. She was always there when you wanted to talk about how people felt about what was going on in the church. She cared very deeply for Grace, and for that I will be forever grateful. She was somebody who quietly sat there, and she was just grace, the grace that every human being would like to have. That was Irene, and she will be missed. And it's nice to have that type of person come into your life. She touched everybody. Thank you, Irene. You will be missed. Thank you. Irene and I sat together every Sunday and we shared our thoughts of, of our family and we enjoyed each other very much. I miss her. We miss her too. Um, it, it was just nice having Irene, I mean, as a, as a fellow Asian, uh, it was nice. Uh, she would always speak to us in Japanese, mm -hmm. and she would speak, which made Yasuko, when she was still coming, made her feel very well, very for comfortable and welcome. Mm -hmm. And it was just nice for Yasuko to have that moment mm -hmm. with her, or moments with her. Mm -hmm. And knowing the past and the history, the mm -hmm. horrible history um, mm -hmm. that went between the, the two countries, mm -hmm. she, you, you would never feel that right. I and mean, she was just so full of grace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, you just never got that. She was just a loving, caring mm -hmm. soul. Mm -hmm. She reminded me a lot, um, sort of, of my mom mm -hmm. when I would speak to her, and mm -hmm. just the way she carried herself reminded me a lot of the way, probably the way they were both brought up. Mm -hmm. but, um, it just, you know, um, very nice to have had her, had that experience, just to, have, to touch, you know, mm -hmm. to have those touch points with her. So. Thank you. Thank you. I have some notes from uh, people. Joy uh, Morise, she, she said, uh, one time I had a conversation with Irene and she told me about her career as a commercial artist. I think she was a very accomplished artist, but that's all I know, <laughs> she said. Can't remember where she worked, but it was a full-time career, so she was an artist. And I got to see her uh, art, artwork. Uh, she's quite accomplished um, uh, art artist. And I have a note from Monique uh, from Brookdale uh, Senior Living, where Irene used to live. I contacted her, and she got uh, she sent me this note. Monique said, 
I had the pleasure of getting to know Miss Irene for almost a year, working as the receptionist at her residence. In that short amount of time, she easily became one of my favorite ladies. Miss Irene was always, always polite and expressed imme immense amounts of gratitude towards those who helped and cared for her. She was just sweet. That's the best way to describe her. Watching and hearing the interactions between her and her sons always put a smile on my face. You could tell there was a lot of love there. She will be greatly missed and cherished in my memory. And I think we can agree <laughs> with Monique and everybody who shared their stories here. So she will be dearly missed and we will remember uh, the time we spent with her and the moments we, um, we had together. Right. So can I uh, say a prayer? Okay, let's pray. Dear me, Father, what a privilege it is, it was to have Irene in our midst. We didn't miss her. Uh, she left us uh, so suddenly. But we will uh, remember her and cherish the memory uh, with her. So uh, whenever we think of her, uh, fill our hearts with joy and gladness and gratitude that she came to us spend time with us and left a legacy of being the kind of person she is and the beautiful smile she shared with us. So until we see each other in, per in, in person in heaven, uh, uh, hold us together in faith and keep us each other in our memories. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture lesson Come from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 17, verses 22 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a streak from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it up. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and became a novel cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will ne nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I the Lord has spoken. I will accomplish it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We empty our hearts and minds to be filled by love, grace, and word. So speak to our hearts because we need your voice. And I pray, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. When I met Reverend Dan, my predecessor, in June of 2018, before my appointment here at Grace UMC, he said, Guess what, Pastor Peter? There is a Korean lady coming to church and she's excited about your arrival. And her name is Irene. I was delighted. Hope there will be somebody who you know, I can speak in Korean. <laughs> On first Sunday, there she was, little tiny lady, sitting where she used to sit, right? <laughs> Second row, with a beautiful smile on her face. At the service, she said something a typical Korean would say when they need a new pastor. Let's meet sometime later. Let's have lunch. That's how we <laughs> greet a new people, a new person. <laughs> Let's have lunch. Which means, I want to get to know you. It was a pleasant surprise on my arrival here. Since then, I've been seeing her. We've been seeing her 
and worshiping with her almost every Sunday over a year before the pandemic, but her health declined and she couldn't come to church as often as she did as she as she uh, she used to about six months then pandemic happened so i was bugging her meaning calling her every week to see if she is okay or not sometimes you know sometimes i skip calling people because i don't want to bother them i don't want to bother you too much but i called irene literally every week because she is Korean. <laughs> but last March, I changed my cell phone and I lost her cell phone number. All I could do was to call Brookdale Senior Living, where she used to live, and ask Monique, who just shared her memory uh, of Irene, ask Monique at reception whether she is doing well or not. Not every week, but every two, three weeks. I was relieved to hear from Monique that she is doing well, even after her son took her away, you know, took her home. Then when I called Brookdale on May 12th, on May 12th, when I asked Monique, she said, I heard Irene passed away about two weeks ago. And I was in dismay and even angry at myself. I, why? Why did I change my stupid cell phone and lost her cell phone number? I asked, and I even screamed on my cell phone, ah, while talking to Monique. It was not so, so you know, surprising, not so pleasant surprise. You know, I had three memory services at Grace, one for Lucille, one for Ken, and one for Belmont. At first, I was super anxious, but in the end, I became so good at it that I told you many, many times, no more funerals, no more memorials. I don't want to be better at this. I had enough. But like due to time, Irene's passing was unexpected, too sudden, and too surprising. And I told my wife, on that day, May 12th, when I first heard the news of Irene's passing, Honey, I think I'll be traumatized. Because ministry is creating and building a relationship, and all of a sudden, you lose it. The book of Ezekiel, from which today's text comes, speaks of this trauma. The trauma of caring and cherishing that relationship, and losing it. But in this case, not people, but losing the land, the promised land, and especially Jerusalem temple. Ever since King Solomon built a temple on Mount Zion, the heart of Jewish faith for people, especially for a priest, was the temple. And they even thought God's throne is located where? right above the Jerusalem temple. Which means, for them, Jerusalem temple was the center of the universe. They thought as long as the temple stands and God's presence is in the temple, they will be safe. But then, unthinkable happened in 587 BCE. Babylonians came, destroyed not only the city of Jerusalem, but also the temple. It was a disaster, killing of people, including babies, and demolishing the heart of their faith, which is the temple. That's why Psalmist says in Psalm 137, verse 9, Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the lock. By the way, does the Bible say that? Yes. <laughs> because losing what they really cherished became and remained as a trauma for them. 
But losing the temple didn't mean losing God. What's at stake is not a physical building, quote unquote, unquote, God's house, but God's presence. That's why in Ezekiel chapter 10, God's glory departs from the temple and later goes to the banks of Babylon where the exiled people lived. In other words, they lost what they thought God's temple, but never God's presence. Just so, our hope is found not in the stuff we have or money we have, but in God, in our relationship with God and His presence in our lives. So the first point I want to share with you today is this. Our hope is built on nothingness than Jesus' blood and righteousness. There are some books we rarely open and read in the Bible unless you have difficulty sleeping, <laughs> like Leviticus and Numbers. And Ezekiel is one of them. It's too complicated and even fantasy-like with chariots and cherubim. Chapter 17, where today's text came from, also has an allegory, allegory of two eagles and one vine. Ezekiel writes, a great eagle came to the Lebanon. He took the top of the cedar, broke off his topmost suit. He carried it to a land of trade, then he took a seed from the land, placed it in fertile soil, it sprouted and became a vine. So who is this great eagle? Babylon. Who is the vine? Judean exiles who got transported to Babylon from Jerusalem. He says, there was another great eagle. Huh. And see, this vine stretched out its roots toward him to another eagle. It shot out its branches toward him so that he might water it. So who is this another eagle? It's Egypt. The vine is trying to get closer to this another uh, eagle, Egypt. And if you wonder, so what? What's going on? It's confusing. It's like eagles and vine. Then, welcome to the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> In short, Judeans, a vine, they were still debating whether they should befriend and depend on Babylon, great evil, or Egypt, another eagle, in order to survive, when in fact, when in fact they have to depend on and put their hope and trust in whom? In God. Right. God says, I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mount. I will put you not in Babylon, not in Egypt, but on a mountain. Where? On Mount Giant. In other words, don't trust them, don't trust Babylon, don't trust Egypt, but trust me, trust God. Just so, my friends, let's get closer to God. Let's invest our time and energy in our relationship with God because what matters at the end of the day what lasts forever is relationship. When I met Irene at a local Korean restaurant, I found out she came to United States back in 1940s. <laughs> 1940s. And she met her husband here in California who used to attend UC Berkeley. And she showed me pictures of, of her family and banners she created and the arts she, she made. And I also found she was how old at that time? Three years ago. Do you know how old she was? 86. 
you know, Asians look younger, right? <laughs> but I told her, you know, my father is 66, and she said, he's a young father. I said, okay. <laughs> so she was 89 when she passed away peacefully uh, in her sleep. By the way, I met uh, Pastor David Yang last Tuesday, and her, he is how old? 61. First, I thought, wow, you're 61. And second, wait a second, then you will soon retire. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's one thing about Irene. She almost always gave me a call back if she missed my phone call. My phone call that repeated bugging, bothering Wednesday phone call. She called me when I pick it up and she says like, ha ha ha, you call me pastor again. Yes, I did. Why was I so sad when I heard the news of her passing? Because I had a relationship with her. Why do we have this service even though nobody from Irene's family is here? Not even a phone call from her family. Because we have a relationship with her. Because what is Christian life? That is building relationships and having hope in Christ that we will finally see each other in heaven and enjoy His presence for ever. So we put our hope in no other, neither in a great eagle Babylon, nor another great eagle Egypt. Not even stuff, meaning not even stuff we have, but in Christ. As we see, my hope is still on nothingness than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest pain, but only in on Jesus' name. On Christ the only, like I said, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Second. Second point I want to share with you is this. As much as you open up yourself, you will receive. As much as you open your, up yourself, you will receive blessings. Today's text describes the future of newly planted Judah. Neither on the banks of Babylon, nor in the desert of Egypt, but on Mount Zion. It says, on the mount height of Israel, I will plant in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and became a noble cedar. But here's the thing. The vine, a new plant, is not for display, but for stay. Ezekiel continues, under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest wings winged creatures of every kind, meaning it will be a hotel for birds of sky. And the birds in the sky will come and dwell in that tree. In today's New Testament reading, speaking of the kingdom of God, Jesus says this, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. In other words, we are to open ourselves up and embrace others. But here's the thing. When you open up and invite others into our lives, who gets the benefit? Little birds of the air or big 6 to 20 feet tall mustard tree? 
I think it's false. In other words, listen, as I look back, people who enjoyed my ministry here, my stay here at Grace UMC, are the ones who open their lives most to me. Your struggles, your stories, and even your secrets. I have no doubt about that. They are the ones who got most out of my ministry, my stay here. Those who didn't get a, they didn't get a lot, definitely opened themselves just a little bit or kept distance from pastor. Therefore, my friends, I beg you, I beg you, let this sink in as much as you open yourself up to your new pastor. You will be, you will appreciate his ministry. If you close your mind and heart, you may become a spectator, outsider, or complainer. And I don't want that to happen. I appreciate Irene and her life because she opened up her life to me. And just so, I beg you to open yourselves up. God says, I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree, dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. In other words, he says, basically, you know, I can dry you up or flourish. I am the Lord. Not to scare you, but to make you do the right thing. So, my friends, let's open yourselves to God and to the incoming pastor, David, and to each other so that we may be filled with appreciation and satisfaction. And I think that's Irene's legacy. Amen. Let's pray. Giver and author of life, we lift up your daughter Irene, who stayed with us for a while and passed away last month. Keep her memory alive and fresh in our minds. Open our hearts to you, to your people, and to the new pastor. We trust in you alone, O Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to give thanks to those who are giving and contributing to church. Uh, if uh, you want to give to church, please uh, leave your offering. In the, in the basket, in the, in the back, as you go out, and may God bless you and your family. Would you please hum along with our doxology? <laughs>